everyone and welcome. Now I'm obviously in a PCB factory and there's lots of tours online already. So instead I want to put my Chinese knowledge to use and provide a glimpse yes, into the people that uphold the backbone of the electronics industry. I have some very special interview questions prepared from the likes of Louis Rossman, the Linus Tech Tips team, Optima Tech, and Jeff Geerling. Next PCB has graciously invited me to one of their PCB board houses here in Jiujiang and one of their SMT assembly lines in Changsha for me to show you the full process of PCBA, from bare FR4 board to a fully assembled PCB, and to meet the people that run the whole show. Now, nestled under the misty Lushan Mountain inside the Yangtze River is the Jiujiang PCB board house. And we start here, where we collect the raw materials, FR4, to make the final PCBs. After the raw materials are collected, the materials are passed through here, where the sides are grinded and the corners are cleaned off for further processing. Now the cut to size boards come out of this machine here and look like this. Now this room is really, really loud because there's so many of these huge CNC drill machines that after the board, the raw FR4 boards are cut and cleaned, they use these numerous number of bits to drill out every small hole that we see on circuit boards. Now, this machine has six heads, each of them simultaneously drilling the same hole on six different boards. That increases the efficiency a lot. And throughout this entire room, there's probably you know, 80 or so different CNC machines that are all doing the same thing. After the boards have been drilled, there's still no copper inside the actual hole. So what needs to happen is an electroplating process where the holes are filled with resin and then chemically altered and electroplated then with the actual copper. And this whole line that you see down here is all about the actual plating of the copper inside both the vias as well as the through holes. Now for multi-layer boards, the laminate and copper are pressed together in these high pressure, high temperature machines. It's blazing hot in this room. I'm sweating. But what happens is that all four or eight or six or however many layers of boards you need are pressed together into about 1.6 millimeters against bare FR4 board. And so this, all the machines back here are, are what's used to pass the boards around and press the laminates together. Now, once the laminate is all pressed together in that previous step, the top and bottom layers are still raw copper. It's not etched away. And so these, these machines here, as well as that UV protected room, are all used for dry film etching, which is different than the wet film etching from before because there's already holes in the board and you don't want wet chemicals to get into those holes. So this process will, fill, will process the top and bottom layers to have the same etched away copper that you see on the other layers. Now I'm in the quality control room for the solder mask. Now I, I know I skipped some steps because this is finally a room that has some peace and quiet. Now I'll play some videos of the boards actually of getting the solder mask applied. What happens is that the solder mask, it's liquid and it's screen printed over the fully laminated board. And later the, uh, the, the pads that you want to solder to and whatnot are etched away, leaving the rest of the copper. Now as you can see the copper is still not plated and that actually happens in a later step where either enig or hazel or either a tin finish or a golden finish or anything in between. Now after the solder mask is applied, we have to print the sill screen on. And so this huge machine down here is a fully automated line for screen printing the actual white or black or any other color silk screen that you see on the circuit boards. Now after the sill screen and the rest of the board is all heated for stability, it's passed into these machines behind me. Now apply an enig coating in particular uh, to the boards and that's what gets you that golden finish that we see on that we see and love on the circuit boards. It's a chemical electroplating process that are on the machines way in the back. And these machines out in the front are actually to clean the boards afterwards. So if we see, the actual golden finish is now on the boards. Now I'm in between two flying probe machines. And these move at ultra high speed with a very, very precise needle to detect opens and shorts on circuit boards. And so there's probably about 70 or 80 of these in this room. And as you can see here, it's going at really, really high speed, probing every single pad on the circuit board before it's cut. 
and, texting, and testing every single connection for shorts. For the bigger boards and for high volume production, a test jig is used, also known as a bed of nails, to test for all shorts and all opens at the same time. And now th those fixtures are custom made in the factory, just in that room over there. And unfortunately, I couldn't get any footage of that, but uh, just to know, it's there. Now, after the boards are fully completed with the silk screen and the surface finish, it's still on a big pane of FR4. So all these machines in the back are what's used to cut away the excess FR4 and, and leave the actual individual board pieces that are shipped out to the customers. Now after all the boards are tested and cut, we are brought to here, uh, the FQC room, where humans actually look at each individual board for quality control before sending it out for final shipment. And we have uh, two rows of people with computers that are looking at every single individual board, um, referencing it to a computer program that displays uh, the board and its Gerber to make sure that the board is fitted accordingly to the specification of the customer. Now, after all the boards are finally quality controlled, that's what FQC stands for, the boards are packaged in this bubble wrap and thin film. And so this is actually really, really heavy. But this is one full package ready to send out to the customers. Now that wraps up our tour for the Jiang Next PCB, PCB factory. Now, that's a whole string say, but I want to thank Mr. Ho for taking me around this expansive factory. It's over 300,000 square feet or 30,000 square meters in area. And I, I got lost so many times all in here. So I want to thank you, Mr. Ho. Thank you. Thank you. Now, our journey begins here in the inventory or warehouse room, uh, where we have people collecting and assessing all the different components that come in from all over the world if you're doing turnkey or already stored here in the warehouse. So all these racks are for uh, various components and they're sorted based on serial number. Within these myriad of boxes, we see uh, the temperature and humidity controlled box for the sensitive ICs and a big x-ray machine that I initially thought were to scan for moisture or I don't know, inside of parts. But actually it scans the number of components in a reel. So instead of using a counting machine, you can just put them into the x-ray machine and it'll figure out how many capacitors or inductors, mostly SMD components there are. Now, when it comes time for assembly, the parts are taken out from the warehouse and placed into the pick and place machine feeders. And so this process is for sorting all the components and uh, coming all the way down and sometimes baking them for dehumidifying the actual ICs. And finally, we arrive um, down here where somebody is physically placing each reel of either the capacitors or resistors or whatever SMD components into the actual feeders. And that's what's going on right here. Now, after all the components are fed into the pick and place machines down there, the boards that were made in the Jiujiang factory or any other factory are placed in these boxes and through the machines that are first applying a, a solder paste layer onto every board. Now here's where the solder paste is actually getting scraped over a stencil which is made outside and shipped in and onto every single board. Now this factory is mainly for mass production, so one stencil can be used for tens of thousands of runs at a time. And afterwards, the solder mask is placed under an AOI, an optical image inspection machine, that makes sure the smoothness, the surface area, the height, and of course, whether the solder paste that is squeegeed on fits within the boundaries of IPC or internal specifications. Now we have to place the actual components which are loaded on these feeders inside the pick and place machine. And as you can see, the pick and place machine goes at super fast speeds and places every individual component on the circuit board with the solder paste on. And so after all that is done, there are three pick and place machines for all the parts that are needed. You arrive here at the reflow oven. And this reflow oven has a lot of different temperatures on this and that's for the different stages of the particular solder paste that's selected for the reflow process. And it goes through this long, long chain of heating and cooling and, uh, and as you can see, this one probably follows this heating curve. And once this heating curve is followed, it gets sort of cooled off and comes out assembled onto this rack here. And now some boards are then passed on to, of course, the auto image inspection, the AOI that is done post-assembly, as well as a human inspection that is done right here. 
Now, although the boards are fully SMT assembled, some of them still need through hole component placing. And so we're at the dip assembly line and we have all these racks of boards that have SMD components populated, but not the actual through hole components. And so we have cute little robots that follow this line and, and, uh, and workers that are placing each dip component on the circuit boards. And so that could be a barrel jack, that could be through hole connectors or anything of that sort. A plastic cover is placed on the dual components to make sure they don't move around too much through the wave soldering process. Now the first thing that happens is that flux is sprayed onto the bottom of the boards and then placed into these huge wave soldering machines. And I'll play some video in the background to show how they apply the solder evenly onto the dual components. It's really, really cool. Now once the boards come out of the machine, most of the through hole parts are soldered nearly perfectly. And there's some that needs just a little bit more tweaking. Now after all that is done, the boards are cleaned off in this machine here, and it's basically like sandblasting, but just compressed air over the boards, and that blows away all the excess flux and solder balls, and, last, and then put into these racks for storage or shipment. Now after the board has finished assembly, it could be passed into one of these conformal coating machines that applies an even coating of UV reactive spray that protects it from dust or liquid or anything of that sort. And then it's baked in this large oven. And for large production boards, final quality control is very important to make sure that every single board functions as expected. And so behind me are a bunch of test rigs and people placing each fully tested board labeled with a serial number into these large boxes and preparing them for final, final shipment. Now, after all that's done, we have a final PCBA, something like this. And I want to thank Mr. Chen for taking me through this entire process of an SMT assembly line from inventorying the parts all the way to a fully functioning and tested production PCB. So thank you so much. Hey, I wanted to provide some more context before showing the interviews. So a few weeks prior to visiting the next PCB factories, I went and asked some of my favorite creators and hopefully some of yours what questions they wanted to ask to the people on the factory floor. So I translated them and asked people at random. Throughout it all, I wanted to provide the most authentic view I could. Now the first set of questions come from Lewis Rossman. One, what's it actually like for the factory worker? Two, what's the pay range like? And three, how are the working conditions and should we be skeptical? I'm curious because I've never been there myself. Uh 就是感觉然后氛围都可以那生活上呢生活也没有什么我觉得也挺好的呀我觉得还挺好的为什么因为工作跟住宿都比较离得比较近啊然后像中午休息时间我还可以回宿舍去躺一下睡一下这个我感
and have projects of their own. Uh,师傅你进门吧,我本专业的话我是学的计算机专业。呃,系统培训,然后实际操作,然后跟师傅一起都有,反正各方面都会学一下,就是比如说那个板子拿过来,然后有一定难度,我比较想尝试。Jeff asked, are there any cool small fixes the employees made to the factory lines themselves? And are there any fun little stories? 呃，员工的一个操作啊，就是就是在生产过程中的话，去减少它的一些呃不必要的一个动作，就是尽尽量简化，简化它的一个操作，操作提升效率嘛，这种做，就是生产的一个要求。啊，我们的话，如果说物料